Alberta's ethics commissioner dropped a bit of a bombshell today, just over a week before the provincial election and hours before the only debate of the campaign. In an SNC-style scandal, the commissioner found Alberta United Conservative leader Danielle Smith broke ethics rules, pressuring her justice minister in relation to COVID restriction prosecutions. Smith is set to face off with NDP leader Rachel Notley in just three hours. About a fifth of eligible voters in Alberta are undecided. As you can see from this recent abacus polling, the NDP and Conservatives are in a dead heat, pretty much neck and neck, and polling is, of course, within the margin of error. Let's bring in two Alberta-based political analysts to break it all down. Columnist Graham Thompson is with us, as is the Globe and Mail's Kelly Kreiderman, hello to both of you. Great to have you with me this evening. I Hi thought, uh, Graham, we were going to be talking just simply about the high stakes nature of this debate, given that polling that we just showed our viewers. But now you have to throw in a, a whole new development. How significant do you think the finding from the Ethics Commissioner is? Yeah, interesting timing. The Commissioner said in her report, look, you know, this is difficult. I'm in a very awkward position because I'm doing this report, this investigation during an election campaign. So yeah, this is a bombshell that hit just hours before tonight's debate and you can this is ammunition of course for the um the ndp uh, to use against smith the thing is as you mentioned um you know it's a, it's a neck and neck um uh position right now the ndp and the ucp are going back and forward in terms of public opinion poll who's in front who's in second and normally heading into a debate uh the front runner normally just has to survive the thing is right now we don't know who the front runner is so it's going to be a lively mm. debate because both um Rachel Notley and Daniel Smith are very good, articulate uh, debaters. And you're going to have um, a really lively debate. And the question is going to be, you know, we always talk about the knockout punch. And they sometimes happen, often they don't. But the thing is, this ethics commissioner's report is going to make it more difficult tonight for Danielle Smith just to avoid talking about this very thing. She's tried to avoid this issue, and now it's popped up only hours to go. We have a bit of a hint, Kelly, in the way in which she might respond through the statement that uh, she and her party released today, in which they essentially, I mean, I'll read the headline, Ethics Commissioner confirms CBC and NDP lies regarding Crown Prosecutor contact, Premier to seek formal guidelines on future policy discussions with Justice Minister. And I, I think the, the reason that she's, you know, or, that, or what prompts that is that the findings from the Ethics Commissioner weren't necessarily of that she contravened the rules based on the allegations as the CBC and NDP made them in previous months, but actually it was this conversation she had with Tyler Shandro, her, her justice minister at the time, in which she did very much what it was alleged the prime minister did with, did with Jody Wilson-Raybould, right? Inappropriately pressured him to intervene where he shouldn't intervene. Do you think that she'll try and field it the same way as she does in this statement tonight in the debate? Absolutely. And, and you know, there has been so many ins and outs of the story. And, you know, some of the confusion about it was came from the UCP leader herself. She did speak and she has for months uh, about speaking to Crown prosecutors. And that's what uh, the CBC and the NDP had said. What this says is, you know, what this lays out is a situation where she called up the justice minister just hours after speaking to someone, uh, Arthur Pulowski, the street preacher charged with obstruction of justice, spoke to him in early January, a few hours later calls the justice minister and doesn't explicitly ask that he drops the charges, but um, from the recounting on the ethics commissioner's side said she was passive aggressive, according to the justice minister, also showing a, a rift uh, a bit between the justice mm -hmm. minister and Ms. Smith, um, and and talked about wanting some kind of action on this. He told her that couldn't be done. The conversation ended, but the ethics commissioner still judging that uh, the the wrong part of what she did in all of this in this discussion that's been going on for months in Alberta with people trying to find out what really happened. I think the clarity we got from this report today that surprised everyone, I think even conservatives, um, that the clarity that the justice minister, uh, we heard finally from him on this. And that's the really interesting right. part. It shows some of the dynamics within UCP leadership as well. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, Graham, my question to you, since you have your finger really on the pulse of what people in Alberta are worried about right now, is whether something like this or the, you know, many other kind of 
uh, mistakes or faux pas or even so far as like this awful thing that one of her candidates said about transgender kids that now she had to distance herself from and say, oh, if you win, you're not a member of the UCP, like compounded together. Is it having an impact on the way in which people are going to vote, do you think? Yeah, this is, you're right. This is like day after day. There's something else popping up. Of course, the NDP is bringing stuff to the to the fore that actually was we didn't know about in the past, and that's an election campaign, of course. And I've talked to some UCP um, candidates who are hoping that, as one person put it, the craziness is baked in. In other words, that Albertans know mm. Smith has said really controversial things, crazy things. Her very first day in office, of course, she said the people who had faced the most discrimination in her lifetime were those who were willfully unvaccinated, and she promised to change the Human Rights Act to give them protection. She never did, but these are comments. She's, they're dragging them up, and some we know about right away, public comments. Others have been dredged up and from a year ago. Uh, so the question right now, are Albertans getting numb to all of this? And this is something that's going to be interesting, especially in Calgary. There's a lot of uh, talk on the doorstep, UCP candidates saying, look, you might not like Danielle Smith, but do you really want the NDP back in power? So basically hold your nose and vote for the UCP because Danielle Smith, yes. Um, polls have shown that she's less liked, less trusted uh, than Rachel Notley, the NDP leader. So right now it's a case of do uh, Albertans, are they basically numb to all of this? You've got to wonder how they could be numb to all of this, especially when you have the ethics commissioner saying, yeah, the premier broached the conflict of interest act and she has broached ethics guidelines and of course any sort of punishment will have to wait until after the election but right now there's a big question in the debate tonight it's going to be notley attacking smith for her comments for her candidates comments you can have smith though attacking notley for notley's record as a premier during a recession so there's something that the, you've got the the uh, premier you got rachel um, notley attacking Smith on her previous comments, but the question right now, I'm wondering how can Albertans get numb to this because there's something happening every day. Kelly, from <laughs> where you sit as you look ahead to that debate taking place in just a few hours' time, three hours' time, who has the most to lose? Oh, that's a good question. You know, if you had asked me that yesterday, I would have said <laughs> Rachel Notley um, for the very reasons that Graham just laid out because you know, expectations for Rachel Notley are actually higher than Daniel Smith at this time in a lot of leadership counts in terms of people thinking that, uh, you know, they, they have heard nothing about, nothing but uh, outlandish things Daniel Smith has said through this campaign. So if she go, oh, I, I actually wrote this this morning, if she went into this debate tonight and just acted mainstream and calm and reasonable, she wins just by by doing uh, by performing decently she will be viewed as having done well now i think you know there does feel like an intensity to the campaign today that hasn't existed to now there's been the distraction of the wildfires you know or the importance of the wildfires even over the campaign and i think today people's minds are going to be more focused on the campaign at hand with with this report coming out with with you know the comments that have forced a use of the UCP to say to a candidate you are not welcome in our caucus learning lessons from the past where they did not make that choice um, I think today really right. focuses the mind and Daniel Smith will be on the hot seat in a lot of ways in this debate tonight